Hello and welcome to another episode of Under Center with Jake Russell. I'm your host and voice of Fighting Tiger football, Colin Sheffield. Alongside me, per the usual, is Coach Russell. Coach Russell, you're on a bye week this week, so there's not really a game to dissect or talk about. But let's get into this bye week. So you get your second set of games through. You go through that three and one. What? How do you take this week moving forward? A little bit different than the first bye week. We took the pads off our guys in practice uh, up until uh, what we call the Futures Bowl, which is our guys that don't travel and dress for the games. They have their own kind of game each week. So we still did that full padded, full contact, everything like that. But uh, kind of a reward to the guys, kind of uh, just a testament to their maturity. We didn't feel like at this point that we have an issue being physical. We don't have an issue practicing hard. So we thought it was a great opportunity uh, head into this last third of the year to uh, just take a little bit off the guys' bodies. We still pushed them really hard in the weight room. We still practiced very hard, got a lot done. And I think that's a big step our team has taken, even from the first bye week where it was, you know, full throttle, as hard as we could practice, you know, getting them to continue to buy into that, uh, being physical every single day, uh, you know, the, the, the gas all the way down every single day. So I thought they handled it really well. So. You go three and one, and honestly, your lone loss in that stretch is to a top ten team and where you felt that you really didn't get beat by them. It kind of felt like the Tigers had beat themselves. What is you? What have you seen in the progression from that first set of games now through the second set headed into your third? Yeah, looking at the season in, in thirds, you know, that first third was really just the how, learning how to win, how to prepare how to win, how to – uh, mentally, you know, uh, face the challenges that every single game of football presents. That's why it's, you know, to me the greatest game in the world is you get uh, the emotions of uh, a month for most people in a three-hour time frame. And, and our guys uh, learn how to handle that and handle that together with so many guys coming from uh, different places, returners, transfers, freshmen, that unique combination that we've got this year and them learning how to go in and go to war together. The second, third was obviously very successful. Like you said, uh, we completed a four-game win streak uh, during that, and then the last game of that was uh, obviously the big rivalry game uh, a couple weeks ago against Lindsey Wilson. Thought our guys prepared definitely good enough to win that game, to have a chance to win that game, uh, but now just didn't perform well enough to win that game. That will be the next big step for our guys is now taking the preparation that we do you know, really Monday through Friday onto the field on Saturday against really good teams, which all three teams will face to finish this season are really good programs. So you give your team some much needed healing, some much needed rest, and you slow down, you kind of start to really dissect mm -hmm. things as you don't have another game coming up. You can focus on the next game a little bit heavier, but you can kind of slow down and really do a little bit of self-reflection. What did you see in those things that you were able to slow down and say, okay, this right here is what we need to really attack in this bye week. At this point in the year, every team we face knows what we're doing in, in all three phases of the game. There's not a lot of secrets. You know, you're going to have a couple wrinkles here and there uh, that's opponent driven uh, and, and vice versa, the same for them. But our base defense is what it is at this point. Our base offense is what it is, what we're doing on special teams. And so really it gets back to the basic fundamentals of football. We really took this past week, the three days that we went out on the field and got back to, you know, I, I call it or tell our guys a lot, it's the same stuff you were hearing in third grade when you started playing, you know, ball security, uh, hand placement, attention to detail uh, that limits penalties on both sides of the ball, uh, that protects the football, helps you win the turnover battle. Those are the things uh, as we saw against Lindsey Wilson, that really uh, show themselves when you're playing really good programs that are coached really well, that do a great job coaching those small things. And now it's not just do you have enough talent to win the game, it's do you have enough discipline to win the game. So how do you go about trying to fix something mm -hmm. like turnovers? Because some of it, you know, is technique, but some of it could also be, you know, a little bit of a mental game, a guy that's struggled a little bit with stuff mm -hmm. like that. How do you go about trying to lift that up? Yeah, one, it's uh, it's taking those moments when they make the you know so-called mistake and learn and grow from it. There's a, a great phrase that says, only a mistake if you don't use it to learn and grow. And, uh, you know, a lot of times something like that has to happen to take the emphasis back on it. You know, special teams is a great example. You know, we got uh, out-executed and, uh, 
you know, really just beating on special teams against Lindsey Wilson. But again, you're playing a different caliber opponent at this level that does a great job with those things. And again, all three of the teams left on our schedule, Cumberland's uh, coming up Saturday, will do a great job in all three phases of the game. So can we take special teams like the conference championships on the line today in a Tuesday practice, which is our first day on the field uh, of the week? Can they take the special teams meeting on a Monday at 3 p.m. after, you know, especially this week, really three days off, you know, like the conference championships on the line? Because at this point, it is, right? Our, we're kind of backed into a corner. We've mm -hmm. got to finish this season 3-0 and to have a chance to make the playoffs, accomplish a lot of the goals we set out. And that's when you really find out a lot about, you know, yourself, the individuals in your team and your team as a whole. You know, are they going to come out swinging? I think we mentioned this last week. Uh, or are they going to kind of curl up in the corner and just say, you know, kind of take their beating? And so um, I'm just excited. I, I know our guys uh, and our staff will respond coming out swinging and give everything they've got. And that's really the only thing I've asked both those groups to do is, you know, just finish this season the right way. It's been a really fun year. We've accomplished a lot already, but I'm, I don't want to uh, kind of uh, rest on our laurels and just say, you know, well, it was a great first year. You know, we've, we've got more wins than we've gotten in a few years. This team's too good to just kind of accept that fact. And uh, we've got too many guys on our program that are competitors to accept that fact. What is it about the Mid-South Conference that mm -hmm. just makes this conference so good? Obviously, besides, you know, just having good teams in the conference, what is it about these teams like Georgetown and Lindsey Wilson that just really drives up this energy in the conference? It's great universities and colleges, first and foremost. So they have the backing, the resources, and the support to field great athletics programs. All these schools, not just the football programs, but if you look around, they're winning championships in, in all the different sports, right? It's the best baseball conference as well. It's probably the best basketball conference as well. Uh, it's probably the best soccer conferences as well. And the, the reason is they're great universities. And then football is uh, really just a driving force for each one of these universities, not only just uh, the number of football players that help support the university, uh, universities financially, but also that football is a great um, kind of ambassador for the universities. The universities take a lot of pride in those football programs and having the best. And so uh, each week uh, you go up against an opponent that can beat you, that has every resource possible. I just say, you know, you're playing with a, an even deck, you know, a fair deck of cards at this point. And so it really at that point comes down to all the things we've just talked about, you know, the preparation, the detail. Uh, all those little things that when you were sitting in the office as an NAI coach uh, in June and there seems like there's nothing to do, can you do something at that point that will make the difference in a game at the end of October? And, man, we have great uh, coaching staffs in this conference. We have unbelievably talented football players in this conference. And, uh, you know, that's why it's the best. That's why it's so fun to coach in, play in. That's why it's, you know, it's a great recruiting um, you know, fact for, for those guys that are looking for somewhere to go play that this is the best conference in, uh, you know, small school college football. Well, Coach, we'll let you take a quick break. When we come back, we'll sit down with the offensive line coach Chris Lane here on Under Center with Jake Russell. If you love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Jason, let's go see your room. Hello 
and welcome back to Under Center with Jake Russell. I'm your host, Colin Sheffield. Alongside me now is the offensive line coach and director of performance, Coach Chris Lane. Coach Lane, it's good to have you on. Um, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, kind of your background, where you come from, and kind of what's brought you here. Uh, so I was, uh, I guess I grew up in Indianapolis, Indiana area. Um, after high school as a Marine for four years, uh, did two tours in Iraq. And then after that, I went to uh, Kentucky Wesleyan, played football there. Um, then had some different jobs, uh, met my wife at Wesleyan, and, uh, and then I ended up at Moorhead State, finished my degree uh, while I was there as an intern, as a strength coach and then got hired on uh, full-time as a strength coach there. I was a head high school football coach for a while uh, after that. And then uh, joined Coach Russell at KCU uh, last year. And then uh, when he took this job here, I was, uh, he was gracious enough to let me come with him. So uh, that's kind of how I ended up here. So most people probably have a pretty good idea. It's pretty telling in the job title what an offensive line coach mm -hmm. is. But director of performance could be a little bit more vague. So why don't you dive into a little bit of what director of performance uh, entails? Uh, really, I'm just in charge of what happens in the weight room, um, in season, out of season, uh, basically setting up the structure for, for what we're doing and the program and the method that we're using, uh, making sure our guys are, are healthy, feeling good uh, from a, a body standpoint. Um, and then, you know, really just being in the weight room with them and, and making sure that the, you know, the speed and uh, strength program is on point. So with weights, you know, a lot of people think, you know, you're just getting in there trying to get big so you can bully around, mm -hmm. you know, the other team. But it's a little bit more to it than that. Most athletes and coaches know, you know, you're in there trying to you use the weights in a different way more mm -hmm. than just strength. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I was a I was a competitive power lifter and a professional strongman for a while, um, and the way that I would lift at, for that is totally different than how our guys lift. Um, we use the weights in something that relates to what they're going to do on a Saturday. Uh, so there is a I mean the traditional movements are there, but our whole goal space basically in season is to keep them as strong and powerful as possible. So anything they accumulated in the off season, we want to keep that level of strength and, and possibly increase it um, so that they can, you know, perform well on a punch. Um, they bend well and their knees are healthy, you know, hamstring and quad strength and all that stuff, uh, making sure their core is good. So it's the transfer of uh, power through, through their bottom half to their up half. Um, you know, so it's definitely some of the things, like you, if you would come in, come in there, you would see us bench pressing, which, you know, any, anybody in the gym is going to do a bench yeah. press, but, uh, we do it in a way that keeps them strong, mm -hmm. um, isn't going to tax them. Our max effort day is Saturday when we're on the field. So we don't really need that max effort day on a Tuesday or Thursday in the weight room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you come from KCU with Coach Russell. What's it been like coaching in the Mid-South Conference? Has there been too much of a learning curve, or what, what's been the deal with that? I mean, you know, football's football, no mm -hmm. matter if it's uh, SEC uh, or, uh, you know, where we're playing. It's, it's the speed, and the, I think it's the athletes. You know, they're faster, they're stronger. Um, and our guys are fast and strong, too. Uh, but you definitely have to be on point, you know, in your preparation uh, for your opponent, um, what the D-line and, and, and the box, the linebackers and stuff are going to do to you. Be prepared for that. Make sure your guys understand what they're – and they've at least seen it once or twice during the week. Um, and I think we, you know, as collectively as a staff do a really good job of presenting what, what we believe we're going to get on Saturday and preparing our guys for it. Uh, but as far as the – the conferences, uh, you know, compared to KCU and, and, and here, it's definitely the speed and uh, strength of the opponent is different. What's been one of the things with your group that you've noticed, you know, some big strengths in your group and then some of the things to improve on in these final three games down the stretch? Yeah, I think, uh, 
I think we're nasty up front. You know, we're physical, uh, strong. Um, sometimes I think we're out of control, um, and that leads to us getting some holding penalties. Or uh, and you know, our left side has been uh, a work in progress. Uh, we're starting, you know, basically two freshmen over there right now. Um, our guys with limited snaps, and they get better each week. Uh, just their knowledge of the game, you know, understanding. Uh, where I need to be and how I'm, how's the best way to get there to execute this block. And that will come with time. Um, but I think, you know, our, we're definitely a, a very good run offensive line. We can, mm -hmm. we can block that really well. And our pass, pass protection has been a work in progress uh, so far. But they, they're definitely working hard and, uh, and trying to make that better each week. So. What's been one of the things joining this staff? You know, obviously you have some of some of your transfers from KCU mm -hmm. players you do know, some of the coaches you do know that come from KCU, but you also have the people that were here already and then also new players and players that were here already as well. What's it like kind of melding all that all that together? Yeah, uh, it's been really fun. Um, and challenging at the same time. Like, you know, first day, in, I remember the first day in the room and you had, you know, a few guys from KCU and a few freshmen and then guys that were here last year. And I'm like, hey, you know, we got a few short weeks to, to become a family and to trust each other. And that was this, the theme for the whole team, really. And I think you can see that happening and it's really, really neat to watch. You also, in the weight room, there is no position group, there is no, uh, it's just, you know, you might have a DB lifting with a running back, and that's really uh, helped our cohesiveness team-wide. Um, as far as the staff goes, it's a blessing every day to just work with them, the guys that were here before and the guys that came with us, uh, Coach Ford and all them. Uh, it's just been a blessing. What's been your favorite part of Campbellsville so far? It could be school or mm -hmm. the city or whatever it is. Uh, you know, my, my daughters both go to school at uh, Taylor County, and my wife teaches there. And uh, us being a part of this university, it's just the city in a whole has been great. Um, you know, the school system from, from that point all the way up to here has just been uh, very refreshing uh, and, again, a blessing just to even be here. So. Well, Coach Lane, thank you for joining us. Yeah, sure. uh, I'll let you take a break, and then whenever we come back, we'll talk with Coach Russell on the upcoming matchup with the Cumberland's Patriots here on Under Center with Jake Russell. Thank you. Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You could say, how are you? Or get a fake tattoo. You could ask with an app if it works for you. You could chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. 
Welcome back to Under Center with Jake Russell. I'm your host, Colin Sheffield. Alongside me once more is Coach Russell. Coach Russell, the Tigers take on the Cumberland's Patriots in this one. They're back at home. We're playing at Finley Stadium. Mm -hmm. This was a team that was ranked in the top 25 at one point, but they've been dropped out since. After a bye week, you may face, you know, some teams face a little bit of an energy crisis, mm -hmm. some don't. You know, it just kind of depends. What are you doing to make sure that maybe that energy crisis doesn't happen? You've got two teams kind of coming off two totally different uh, weeks, right? We have our bye week uh, coming off a big rivalry game two weeks ago against Lindsey Wilson. Uh, able to take that week and, like we mentioned, get back to some of the basics and fundamentals that will be a difference maker uh, Saturday. And then you've got a team that just played Lindsey Wilson, uh, one of the best programs in the nation, uh, and coming off that, there's probably pros and cons to each. Uh, this will be a great opponent. Cumberland's is, a, a, as we mentioned, one of those great universities, uh, really growing in uh, facilities and resources-wise right at the top of NAI. Uh, they've got some unbelievably talented football players. They've got a great coaching staff. Uh, they're going to be very hungry for a win as well, right? They they started off, I think, 4-0, and were ranked, uh, had a big uh, win against Reinhardt, who was a ranked opponent at the time. So they've got the ability to beat anybody. Uh, they've had some struggles of late uh, trying to win some games. Uh, it's just kind of, uh, as we talked about, the, the con of being in the conference, mm -hmm. I guess, or pro and con, is that the competition is always super high, that anybody can beat you, and that you can probably beat anybody. So they're going to be super hungry. They're going to be super motivated for a win to kind of get their season, the last third of their season, back on track and where they expect to be every single year. And uh, this is a huge opportunity for us as well to kind of, you know, as we got that four-game win streak, now we faced our first loss in about a month or a month and a half even. And how do we respond from that? Now, they played Lindsey Wilson. It was 41-18. to 18. They lost that game. They're not coming off of a bye week. We are. So do you feel as though maybe, you know, you have – a little bit of an edge, able to have that week of healing after coming off such a physical game against Lindsey Wilson, whereas mm -hmm. they're coming off of a game against Lindsey Wilson just last week? I think if you have a team that is mature enough to handle the bye week the right way, it is a huge advantage. And I do thank our guys at this point uh, were able to do that. We obviously were able to spend an extra week looking at Cumberland's film, you know, where last week they're all in on Lindsey Wilson, and then, you know, probably Sunday they started on us. So, yeah, definitely a little bit of an advantage. Uh, nothing changes, right? Our Tuesday practice will be the exact same as it would be any other week. Um, like I said, they're, they're definitely going to be good enough. It's not a thing where it's going to go in and you're going to say, well, we're definitely going to you know, be able to beat them because they played Lindsey Wilson last week. I mean, every single team you play in this conference is super physical, very talented. You know, at this point in the year, nobody's 100%. Mm -hmm. um, you know, guys come in and say, are you guys you know, 100%? And it's like, no, we're, we're never going to be that in season. But um, you know, we've done a great job with the way we practice, the way we lift weights. Uh, Coach Lane running that program, getting our guys prepared to go through a college football season and have been able to stay very healthy. And I think the way we practice, prepare our guys, recover, lift, all that stuff throughout the week is a huge proponent. That I think that will really show itself uh, more than anything over the final three weeks. Now the Tigers are going to face a pretty balanced offense mm -hmm. in what Cumberland's does through the air and on the ground. What's it like preparing your defense for a team that's so balanced, you know, you can't just sit back and say, okay, this is going to be a passing game or we need to really put, you know, guys up on the line to defend this run when it's so balanced. What do you do throughout the week to prepare your team for that? Coach Ford and his staff do an awesome job taking away the strength of the opponent's offense. Well, like you said, this week they are very talented in the running game. That's what they want to do first and foremost. And you know, it's probably a sign of a, a team that's never going to be out of the game of somebody that can run the ball really well and then set up their passing game uh, through the run. If you look at the best teams around the nation, although their passing numbers may be high, a lot of points per game, they all will be able to run the ball uh, efficiently and at least set up what they want to do in the passing game. So now you face an opponent, like you said, who has the ability to do both. And it'll be a great challenge. You know, again, our defensive staff's been diving into it. This will be the second week now. I know they're really juiced up about it. And again, this is the fun part about it is our defense gets to go out and prepare like they're facing the best offenses in the nation, which they are. And it's a great challenge. Our defense has just been unreal all year. Testament to the staff, also testament to those players buying in, uh, being disciplined and selfless enough to do that. Now we turn to the offense. 
we struggled a little bit against Lindsey Wilson, stalled out a few mm -hmm. times, kind of shot ourselves in the foot a few times, but able to build a little bit of momentum there towards the end in the fourth quarter of the Lindsey Wilson game. What do you do throughout this week and this past week to kind of instill that confidence back in them to get back to, you know, that high-flying <laughs> offense that they are? Yeah, it's an interesting game against Lindsey, right? You, you probably – Minimal should have 17, 21 points on the board in the first quarter, and then everybody's sitting here saying, man, the offense was so great, so explosive. You know, it's one of the best yeah. in the nation. Well, it is, right? Mm -hmm. And so, again, like we mentioned, uh, getting back to some of the basics, it's not having, you know, an offsides penalty on a, on a play where there is no play. It's not getting a holding on first down. It's not, you know, b uh, blowing a route assignment on a play that could have been a big play. It's the quarterback, you know, trusting his protection, trusting his reads progression. It's all those things. But that starts with the coaching staff, us doing a great job coaching those basic techniques, instilling the confidence, encouraging those guys, because we are a really good offense, potentially to be great, and hopefully we can get to that next level over these three games, because it's going to take that. Uh, and not because we don't have a great defense, and that's the great thing. I tell our quarterbacks that a lot. Like, there's not that pressure to go score 60 points to win a game. So it's going to take a great effort on both sides of the ball and then throw in special teams, which we have put a huge focus on these last three games to go beat the teams in our conference. What are a few of the keys to victories or to the victories that you've had in the past mm -hmm. and now moving forward in these next couple games against teams that are very highly ranked, mm -hmm. very good? What are those keys moving forward? Yeah, clean football. I tell our offense this a lot, uh, quarterbacks especially, that if we play clean – because our coaches have done a great job uh, creating a game plan that can win the game because our coaching staff since we got here in March has done a great job accumulating enough talent to win in this conference. You just have to play a clean game, right? So you look back at Lindsey Wilson, right? Wasn't necessarily very clean on special teams. It definitely wasn't clean uh, on offense. Uh, I thought the defense played overall a really good game, forced Lindsey to do some things they weren't comfortable doing. But if all three phases aren't clean, <clears throat> then you wind up with a 35-14 a game that probably, in theory, was a lot closer than that. Um, but that was the final score, right? So when you go against great coach teams, uh, teams that are going to be really disciplined and good in all three phases, it's who can play the cleanest game, who can have the least penalties on special teams. Uh, can we get 11 guys on the field just every play? Just the basics, the very basics of football. Can we protect the football? Can we get the football on the other side? And then it will come down in these big games where – when your guy has an opportunity to make the play, has he put in enough reps over the course of this season? Has he paid attention enough in meetings? Has he sacrificed enough to make that game-winning play? That will happen over the last three games. So that is the, the, the benefit of playing this conference is there does have to be guys that step up and make that game-winning play. Well, Coach, best of luck this mm -hmm. weekend. Can't wait to watch it. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. The Tigers are still at Finley Stadium. They're taking on the University of the Cumberland's Patriots. This kickoff is set for 7 p.m. this Saturday on the 28th. Be sure to join our Claw United page to see video coverage on the CU Tigers YouTube channel. You can also join us for radio coverage on 88.7 The Tiger as well as on the TuneIn app at WLCU-FM. I'm your host, Colin Sheffield. Thank you for tuning in to Under Center with Jake Russell.